Hi, this is Andrew. Thanks for joining me. This starts a series uh, related to Active Directory and the basics of installing and using. It's not going to go into tremendous depth, but it will show you how to get started with it and really how to start experimenting with it if that's your goal. Uh, as a, a teacher who has covered this material in my classes, this is Active Directory is probably one of the things that leads uh, most directly to experience that employers are looking for. Um, the students of mine who found work either while they were still in school, before they finished, or later on after they graduated, a lot of them talk about the Active Directory experience as being something that was directly, uh, directly applied to what they were hired to do or was impressive on their in their interviews. So this is, like I said, going to cover some of the basics of it. It'll be um, a few parts just to go over each of the steps. So first thing we're going to do, this is not going to be the theoretical the, um, Active Directory video that describes how it works and what it does. Uh, I'll assume you found that elsewhere. This is really the fo focused on how do you install it? How do you get started with it? In the future, if you would like, I can create a, a prequel to this series to say, this is how you install Windows Server 2019, a demo evaluation copy for free in a virtual environment. Uh, in this case, I'm using Amazon Web Services for my virtual environment. So I have a server here, Server 2019, that I can get started on the installation. So the first preliminary step I want to do before installing Active Directory directory services is I need to change a DNS adapter on my computer to point back to myself. Uh, this is where, uh, because this is a domain controller, it's going to use itself to, to resolve IP addresses. Really, um, with DNS, it's resolving a, a computer name to an IP address. In this case, it's a service to an IP address. And we need to make sure that th we can resolve the service that we're trying to use. So I'm going to open up settings and let's see, click on Ethernet and change adapter options. Again, multiple ways to get here. But what I'm looking at is um, the IPv4 setting. And I'm going to change the DNS server from obtain automatically to 127.0.0.1. Just the loopback address. If I were, if I already had a an Active Directory environment, I would need to point this server, this DNS server address, to an existing Active Directory domain controller. But because this is the first one, I'll just point back to myself. And later on, if I add other domain controllers, I can put them in as, uh, as extra, as alternate domain controllers. So next thing I need to do is launch server manager. That is where we're going to install the service from. Uh, so I will do manage, add roles and features. And this is just the listing of roles and features I can add. So. I'll go through, it's a role-based feature. Um, I'm installing it on this system, which is Windows Server 2019. And I wanna check off the box for Active Directory Domain Services. And when I do that, it's gonna say, you need to install this, all this other stuff as well. That's fine, I will add those as well. And it will basically add all the prerequisites that it needs. Now, some directions you will see also tell you, they don't tell you to check off uh, .NET Framework, but they will show that it's already checked off for other reasons. In my case, I don't have that there, and I don't want to because this is actually not internet connected. It will run into issues installing it. So I don't want to check anything else off, and then I can move forward, and this will give me some information. I will go ahead and start the installation. It is now going to go through the installation process, which includes uh, prerequisites and configuration uh, verification. Okay, the installation actually finished and uh, we can now act, now install uh, or, or configure this server as a domain controller. A couple of things we can do here. Uh, I can say now click this server to be a domain controller. And that's really, that would be the, first, the next step that I want to do. Now, assuming I make a mistake and say, oops, I closed this box and didn't see that message. 
you don't have to start over. You don't have to go through the whole thing again. This uh, triangle, this notification up here says, do you want to promote this uh, server to a domain controller? So that's the other place you can find this. I'm gonna click yes. And if this were an existing domain environment, I could add this as a domain controller, assuming I had permissions to do that. Since it is not, there's no domain environment, I'm starting from scratch to create a test environment. Um, I'm going to add a new forest. And you notice when I do add a new forest, it eliminates uh, selecting the domain and changing and adding credentials and everything. That would be if it if I were adding to an existing uh, domain or an, exist, an existing forest. So since it's a new forest, all I have to do is give it a name. I'm going to give it the name test.local. Um, you can give it any name you want, especially if it is not anything that will be used eventually. Uh, if you're in a work environment, obviously make sure it is something that is not going to bother people or not going to be too similar to their their existing domain because you can run into confusions. That's where test.local, class.local, something .local stands out as being a test environment. Uh, in Microsoft classes, they use the name Contoso all the time. Uh, We'll just stick with this. And now forest functional levels, they don't even offer higher forest functional levels in 2019. Uh, you, If you have reason to have older servers in place, you can go with a lower functional level. We don't, we're gonna leave it at 2016. Uh, we do not need to do anything with the read-only domain controller um, because it is the first domain controller. Now. DNS server. See how there's a check mark, mark here. This is going to install DNS on the system and it's a very um, simple process. It is really a check mark. And since there's no other global catalog servers, we need a global catalog server here. So uh, there is one more password we're going to enter and it is the directory services restore mode password. This is if we needed to boot up the system in safe mode and restore directory services. Um, we're going to put a password here. Really important to remember and have this uh, documented somewhere if it's a real production environment. Uh, in our case, it's not that important. I will just enter a generic password we use. Now, um, we will ent I'll enter it twice. One thing is most of the time in Active Directory, you need complex passwords. So make sure you have a password that you can use. In Microsoft training that I've taken, they use the, the term password with a capital P with the at sign SSW0RD, which means that it has all four of the complexity requirements. It's eight characters long. Um, technically, you could look at that and say that's a complex password. It is not at all complex. It's not at all safe, but it can be used in this environment. I have a slightly different one that I use just for this environment. It's not a secure password, but um, it's just something that I, I can put any place I need to have a password. So I'm not trying to guess at what password I put in what spot. Now, uh, there's no DNS delegation. We don't have an existing DNS uh, environment. This is a, a completely isolated environment. So we can just click next here. Um, NetBIOS name, it will uh, eventually, it'll read through, look for any any interference or any other problems, and it's gonna use test because that is my domain, test.local. The NetBIOS domain name is test. I could change this if I needed to. If I had test A and test B, if I had multiple domains, I might wanna use test, a different dom NetBIOS domain name. If it's a single domain, it, you don't have to do anything here. Next up is where we're going to actually put the, files that we're going that will store active directory default locations are just fine and then we're going to just review all the options now it's going to go through and do a prerequisite check this is um where it says based on these settings what kind of problems are we going to run into and some of them are just notifications and if there were a real error it would let us know here's a notification saying Server 2019 uh, domain controllers have a default for a security setting named allow cryptographic algorithms compatible with NT4O. Um, so it's just telling us these things. 
Uh, one physical app adapter does not have a static IP address. Again, not a real issue. We have defined addresses in our AWS environment. Um, don't have to worry about this one. And you can go through and read all of them. They're just the ones that are here are all notifications, prerequisite check completed. If there was an issue, you would need to fix it before you could move forward. So now I can click install and that should be the final installation. This will take a few minutes and then the server will reboot. So um, we'll skip forward to when that happens. Okay, that took three or four minutes and I am now ready to log back in. Now, one of the things I want to do is I want to make sure I'm logging in with a domain account. So I'm going to type in my domain test at administrator or test slash administrator and ministry tour. Um, I could have also done administrator at test.local uh, or test.local backslash administrator. A few different ways to say this is the domain I want to use, but this is um this is the one i typed here i will type in the password for that administrator account and it will uh create the remote desktop connection to this system if i were looking at the system directly at the console whether it was a virtual machine or a physical machine a spare spare hardware it would be you know i'd be seeing a very similar thing on the desktop where it would be kind of logging in and spinning so um First time logging in takes a few minutes. Uh, logging into domain controllers tends to take a little bit longer as well. Um, so let's skip forward a few seconds. So that's all I have for you today. Thanks for watching. Okay, uh, and now I just got the message um, that the remote computer cannot be authenticated. So I'm gonna do the check mark and log in. Again, in a, with a physical system, you wouldn't be getting that message because you'd be looking directly at the console. And now it's just waiting for the last little bit. And when we get in, we're in the domain controller. We don't have any other systems in the domain. I'll click around and show you that a little bit, but this is a fully functional domain controller. Um, if this were a, an evaluation copy of Windows Server 2019, it would last for 180 days and you could renew it several times. But um, aside from that, it functions fully like a normal domain controller. So. Any second now, we will see a regular desktop. Here we go. So first thing I want to do is, um, I like to look at uh, Active Directory users and computers. This is where, uh, as a system administrator, I have spent most of my time doing things, looking around and things. There are other Active Directory utilities that I use on a less regular basis, but this is the, the, the place I would check things most. Um, and here is my Active Directory environment. I can say I have test.local and I have computers. I don't have any. I haven't joined any computers to the domain. Domain controllers. I have one. That's this domain controller. I can look at users. Under users, I have the administrator account. I also have a disabled guest account. If I want to create a new user, I can do it right here. Just say new user and we'll go with Fred and um, Fred at test.local. And I just, and I'll put a So it happens when you don't hit the tab key. Uh, so I have created Fred at test.local. Um, one thing to keep in mind, you know, I didn't go in and, and set any settings at all. I didn't even give him a, a last name, but um, you can, this is password must uh, user must change password at next login. Uh, this is a problem if you're using a uh, remote desktop. So we might need to uncheck this later on. Um, you can set any other information about this account from, or most, most information about this account from here. There are other ways, uh, newer ways to create accounts. This is my preferred way. This shows everything that I want to see. This shows information about test.local. I can look at properties of the domain. Um, I could, this will show the functional levels. If there were the opportunity to raise the functional levels, I could, re, I could raise some of them here. Um, so this is my 
preferred way to look at the environment. If I were doing heavy duty administration on a completely new environment right now, I'd be looking at uh, better ways to do it. But PowerShell is really useful for seeing more details about accounts. Uh, we can look at that more later on. So that is installing Active Directory. We've just installed it, we configured it, we confirmed that it is working. And in future videos, we'll add another domain controller, we'll join a computer to the domain, we'll do some group policies, some folder permissions, things like that to show what Active Directory can do in a small environment that could scale up to a large environment.